Hi, my name's Llewellyn Daisel, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about my story and my journey thus far with a crazy rare disease called neuromyelitis optica or NMO. Uh, this is supposed to be a five minute speech, so I'll try and keep it as short as I can, even though it's been a very long journey thus far. Uh, since I was 25, just to give a little bit of background, since I was 25, I'm now 52 years old, um, I've been getting pneumonia for at least two to three times a year. And this would uh, frequency would escalate as I got older. Um, there were probably early signs of NMO. At that stage in, in my early 20s, I just had no idea. Uh, and, and obviously no one else did. Uh, so that's just a little background because there's a, a few references to having pneumonia a lot throughout the speech. Um, a quick little um, uh, uh, journey on, on how it so, sort of started to manifest itself in my life. In May 2004, at the age of 39, I woke up one morning and I had an incredibly itchy spot at the back of my neck. It was almost as though it felt as though I'd had a mozzie bite or, you know, a bit of a spider bite or something during the night. So it was, you know, delightful to scratch it and, and, and that went on for a few days. And then after a, a, probably about three or four days, I scratched it one evening and had this incredible sh pain shoot down the back of my neck and all the way down my back to my bottom. It nearly blew me away and, and, and seriously, I had to hang on. Um, to make sure that I didn't faint. This happened a few more times over a couple of weeks and then it disappeared. Six months later, I woke up one morning with this sort of numb big toe and I thought I just needed a bit of a tune up with the chiropractor and you know, I'm getting a little bit um, older, I'd pinched a nerve. So I made an appointment with the, with the chiropractor. Um, I couldn't see him for two weeks and within, within that two-week period, I had severe spasming and contractions in one leg and this feeling in the other leg as if someone had stuck this red-hot poker um, from the very bottom of my foot all the way up to my, my tush, my bottom. Uh, that happened every four minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was absolutely exhausting and unbearable. My body was, body was also totally numb from just below my breasts all the way down to my tippy toes. I could still walk properly, although I totally relied on my eyesight to see where my feet were going. Then a medical specialist merry-go-round started to begin. Uh, there was so much to tell, and I just don't have enough time to tell, and, tell it in. So here's a brief summary on my events since 2004. I've had five massive, huge attacks that I can recall and lo that, that have sent me to hospital and loads of small ones in between uh, where I've just rested up at home and, um, and, and gone back to work. That's uh, within a seven-year period. I've been blind more many times than I can count, optic neuritis, at least uh, blind totally in one eye for five months or so where it's been completely black and it's usually was always my left eye. Um, at this stage, I'm now legally blind in my left eye, which means it's just fuzzy. I can see color and light, but I can't read or, or focus on people's faces uh, and, and a lot more. I've had about 25 months, uh, at that stage, had 25 months off work between um, 2004 and 2011. Um, and probably more because, I, again, the small attacks, I'd stay at home and then a lot of the ill days where I just couldn't get up to go to work. Um, my symptoms over the years of attacks have been things such as vomiting for months on end. I had hiccups for a month <laughs> as well as vomiting at the same time. I've had banding around my torso at least twice where it feels like you've got an incredibly tight um, corset on. Um, during the attacks, um, leg and bottom spasms that literally when I was walking threw me off the toilet uh, and would throw me out of bed. And, and I'm not being, I'm not being, I'm not joking here. It was totally honest, uh, honest that it used to do that. The longest one I've ever had, uh, the longest spasm, leg spasm I've ever, and bottom spasm I've ever had was for 16 hours and that was only a few years ago. I nearly lost my mind. Thank goodness for swear words. <laughs> I 
I still have severe uh, spasms almost every day, um, usually in the afternoon. Numbness from my waist down for months and months on end and at, at different times during those attacks. The palms of my hands here, although they were soft to feel, um, to touch, um, feel like sandpaper. And I've had that since 2010. Um, I felt as though I've had, one of the attacks felt as though I had ants running all over my legs and my torso. Uh, pneumonia more times than I can count since my early 20s. In fact, it just became like a common cold for me. Um, nerve pain that is so bad uh, that it felt like severe sunburn. I still have that down the left part of my torso, especially at the back. Red hot poker uh, pain in my legs, such as I described, and I've had that several times. Oh, dear, shingles looking like a tax where you can actually follow the nerve pathway and see the, the redness of, of where the, the, the attack has, has occurred on that nerve. Uh, that happened heaps of times. Uh, it was almost like having, I'd be, you know, sort of sitting in there, sitting at home or sitting in the car, and suddenly it was like millions of needles being punched into my skin at once. Um, I'd sit there with cold compresses on it for two hours until it would calm down the skin. Uh, I had a time when it felt as though my hands were being stuck in boiling water, that they were so, so hot. But they weren't. It was just the madness of the uh, communication going on in between my brain and my and my spinal cord. Numbness from beneath my breasts, my toes. I've mentioned that. And that, oh, yeah, that happened for over nine months a couple of times. Um, at one stage when I had a severe attack, I couldn't move my head for a millimetre without screaming the hospital down because at the base of the skull it was so inflamed and all the morphine in the world could not help that. That just somehow got better. Um, I couldn't sneeze or cough and to this day I still um, have a lot of trouble coughing and sneezing. Uh, my skin was so painful I had to wear cotton, white cotton gloves when I was very ill in hospital when I had a major, major attack in 2010 and became a paraplegic. But that was, that was particularly bad. But several times I've had to wear cotton gloves. Uh, nobody could touch me. And there were spaces on my body, uh, like, like under my breast or uh, my arm or somewhere where it might be, where um, it, yeah, no one could actually touch me. I felt like Michael Jackson at the time, even though I was ill. I've had arm spasms that draw my arms up a couple of times. I've had those. Um, episodes where you know it would last for about six weeks and I'd be sitting there and suddenly I'd have an arm come up or both arms would, arms would curl up and they'd sort of look sort of gnarly like this and then they'd relax and then four minutes later or so it would do the same thing oh it was insane so many scans tests MRIs um, lost count uh, I now have a port uh, just underneath my skin here for taking blood and for, and for putting um, IV infusions in. Um, I even go to sleep in it during MRIs. I know some of you are going to think, my God, how do you do that? I do. I just go to sleep in MRIs, <laughs> which is hilarious because they have to stop and ask me to stop snoring as I'm moving around. <laughs> um, I've had three days in ICU. Uh, probably not funny because um, luckily I'm not in a crying mood today. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, three days in ICU where I wanted to die. Um, when I sort of came out of this haze of being so ill, uh, I was so disappointed I was still alive. Oh, man, it was terrible. It was awful. Um, I still have that really vivid image in my head of how tangled my hair was and just how, I, how yucky I felt. Oh, just how I felt. And I said to my mum I wanted to die and she said, uh, crying, that um, I, I couldn't because I couldn't leave her because who would who would be there for her, which was a really sad, selfish, sad, but um, oh, awful moment. Um, anyway, cut a long story short, um, I've had th thousands of IV milligrams of steroids pumped into my body, uh, Tysabri, Rituximab. I you know, even had chemotherapy for six months to uh, because I was so ill with one attack 
to try and um, calm my body down, my nervous, my spinal cord down. Uh, oh, gee, diagnosed as having MS, not an unfamiliar story. Then um, got diagnosed with NMO six years later after I'd become a paraplegic in 2010. Um, okay, so after becoming a paraplegic, as I just mentioned, in, in January 2010, uh, that happened, that that attack happened over a four-day period, which was bizarre, um, and leaving rehab, oh, God, I can't, can't tell you how many times I've been in rehab, but anyway, leaving rehab at that particular time, moving, and I moved into a new house after seven and a half months in, in hospital, I remember feeling so, so alone as I'd been dumped in a, a paddock, paddock with nothing around me. Uh, I had no help nor knowledge um, of things like even where to buy pads from. Uh, I didn't know anyone else with the disease. No one else knew the disease. So I started um, the uh, Australian support group on Facebook which grew very, very slowly um, and then um, that started to, to, as it started to grow, people started to chat uh, and it was nice to know that I wasn't, wasn't alone and I had some support and I could start to gain some knowledge. Um, I mourned for a very long time as I'd lost almost everything, uh, my dreams, my career, my legs, my continence, um, my eyesight, uh, I had, had pain all the time, my future, many of my friends who disappeared, very common with people who have acute illness. Um, my dog had passed away a couple of months before uh, I'd moved out of my home uh, to where I am now. I'd given up working altogether. It was impossible at that stage I'd resign uh, because it was not possible for me to work even part-time or one or two days a week. It just wasn't possible. The disease ha had and has completely nailed me. Uh, then I started to gain confidence as it's a whole different world living in a, a wheelchair, let alone living with a really rare and crazy acute illness and unpredictable illness. So I'd always wanted to take up photography, so I decided why not? I did. I wanted to do a regular blog. I was passionate about letting the world know about the disease and trying to do something about it, especially the awareness side of it and, I don't know, fundraising, doing whatever it might be. Uh, you know, um, media intention, etc. So I started a blog. I landed up doing, not only doing a blog, but building a website. <laughs> I don't even have any IT experience. So I was lucky I even knew how to turn on a, a, a computer at that stage. Um, I set up a wheelchair disability group and ran that for just over five years. Uh, I've even been ice skating in my wheelchair, on my wheelchair, on the ice. It was fabulous. Did that several times. I loved it. It was so much fun. I now uh, travel around everywhere in uh, on public transport, buses and uh, uh, trains. Trams I can't, I don't. But I go to the zoo, the art gallery, movies, you name it. Whatever I feel like doing, I'll find a way to do it. It's easy. Uh, luckily, I live in a city where I'm able to do that. And uh, only a few months ago, when on, on my, my first holiday in 10 years, first holiday as a paraplegic and um, first cruise ever to New Zealand. It was fantastic for two weeks. I always try and see the funny side of things that I've, as, as I find it's just for me an easier way to cope. I've always had that crazy warped sense of humour. <laughs> I wish I could draw cartoons because it would make for a great, a great easy way to explain what I see in my head, um, being a visual. Uh, but know this, that I do, um, uh, I do have moments where I cry and I feel sad. It's not all laughs and, and joy for, for me and it's not all sort of making it a ha-ha kind of moment. Um, 
I do uh, face a lot of adversity, but I just feel that comedy makes it a little bit easier. I do feel as though I climb Mount Everest every day because I do. Uh, you know, it's not easy, and I'm sure a lot of you will feel that way, same way. With all the spasms that I continue to have, the nerve pain and severe leg stiffness in my left leg. Some days I can't even bend it. I have to wheel up to the wall and push my t foot and my toes against the wall just to try and get my leg to bend. It's hilarious. Uh, sometimes I'll be at the movies and some people will say, where are you going? What are you doing? And I'll just yell over my shoulder. I'm just straightening, bending my knee. My knee. And I always try and find a solution for something. And it doesn't mean I have to do it on my own. I can often find that it's um, great to, to draw on your resources and Google and do all those sort of things to try and find the answer if you're looking for something that you want to change. And don't forget, it's not hard, but at least try to ask for help. I really believe that as lousy as this disease is and the challenges that it's thrown at me every day, it's actually enabled me to be the person I really am. The character and the soul that I was when I was born, um, before I was influenced by society, peer group pressure, constraint of corporate rules and working, um, all those things, I finally feel as though I'm actually me and I've found me and I also allow myself to be me and who I am. Thanks for listening. See you. Bye.